My name is Joshua Chebri. I'm from Houston, Texas. My name is Janie. And I was born in Beijing. My name is Cooper Thomas, and I'm from Portland, Oregon. My name is Santiago Guerrero. I'm from Ecuador. I'm Kelly McFree. And I'm from Encinitas, California. My name is Lamont Rajput. And I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. My name is Tadipia Kanufa. I'm from Oakbridge, New Jersey. My name is Anna Prabhapa. And uh, I am from Amman, Jordan. My name is Melissa Ann. And I'm, I'm from St. Louis, Louis Missouri. Missouri. I'm Reed Womack, and I'm from Yarmouth, Maine. How have I not changed? Um, <laughs> Got grown more facial hair. That's huge. Probably gained a couple inches. <laughs> Maybe a few pounds as well. <laughs> I think I got interested in a lot of different things that I um, I didn't come into Dartmouth thinking originally I would be interested in. Well, I happened to change my major a couple of times. In between point A and whatnot, maybe point Z as uh, where I'm at right now, I did everything under the sun. I don't think I would have expected myself to have taken the journey I've gotten to get here. You went from politics and law to like econ. I don't think I had any idea where I was going to be now four years ago. Uh, engineering to pre-med to um, public policy, like everything. I love Dartmouth because it's a small school and there's a great sense of community here. It's embarrassing. And, yeah. <laughs> Once I got to know all of my friends, they, like, turns out they're the most incredible people I've met, I've ever met. A girl from my school went to Dartmouth last year, and I sent her, like, two questions, and I remember, like, she responded with, like, pages and pages of stuff, and it was, like, right before exams, and she was, like, technically I should be busy, but I'm never, like, too busy to promote Dartmouth. How do you think you have changed? Um, don't say like as much <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, but... I mean, I think one thing that hasn't changed is when I, when I got here, I was really excited. Um, and I'm still really excited. My most memorable college experience, uh, there's just so many. Um, I would probably say sophomore summer, just because everybody kind of comes in saying there's all this, this newfound energy on campus and everyone's really relaxed. I went on the FSP to Beijing my freshman summer and that was definitely just one of the most incredible terms that I've had. The Normal Studies FSP um, was we spent about four or five days on a homestay an old homeland in South Africa during the apartheid when black people weren't actually allowed to live in cities. They were relegated to these old homelands that today are still really poor and we spent a while up in a little village up there collecting firewood, cooking, pretty eye-opening experience. My freshman year, actually, um, during the winter, I did my first play in the Bentley Theater. It was called Fences. It was a Black Underground Theater Association production. The memory I have vividly is the first performance we did. I was walking onto the stage from behind the audience. I remember my, my, my heart pumping very, very fast, of it, full of excitement and nervousness, and, and, and I just went. I think I'm always just really impressed by how dedicated everyone is and how um, excited they are to be here and to be doing the things that they're doing. A lot of the students here really care about each other and about the community and they're really able to kind of pick up and they just kind of have the strength to, you know, find the problems and really be, have this initiative to go out and fix them. And here there's so many people who support you, like from so many different realms of the school. Um, and when you want to do something, there are people who are like, yeah, let's make that happen for you. Among my, f my favorite things here is that we have some really amazing faculty. Your professors don't just want to know you as a student, they want to know you as a person. M many of us get invited to dinners or uh, lunches and so on with, with faculty all the time. Even just sitting with your professor for an hour, you know, outside of class, outside of office hours, um, gives, you know, so much more depth to the relationship and you learn so much more about each other, um, just, you know, kind of sitting with them for lunch. The best quality about Dartmouth is being able to get to know professors, and graduate students and the people around you. There's just so many great moments. They range from like crazy amazing, like going to take a trip to Moose Lock together and just having a great day trip to just hang out and watching movies together or like exercising together and going on runs. I think the library is probably 
one of the like best run things at Dartmouth. It's like so seamless for students. It's been really nice to come here and have so many resources available and so many places I can go to do work. The library has been a source of, of spiritual nourishment actually for me because down in the basement there's a section of a lot of biblical books and I'm someone who likes to study the scripture and I checked out so many books from the library. Even right now there's a stack of books on, and, and on my desk. When I don't have to study, when I just want to explore, I like going um, upstairs in Sanborn on the southern end upstairs. They have many books that are just classics and so I just randomly pick a book and start reading it upstairs. And it's especially nice when it's sunny or when it's snowy outside. You just sit next to the window on a couch and read it. It's a really kind of special community. It's just this gathering site for everyone to come together. And I feel like even in times of stress, it's like coming to the library really kind of brings out the good things of everybody here. I've spent so much time in this library. You guys don't even know. know. <laughs> During finals period, freshman spring, I brought like my fan in the periodicals room, brought like lots of food, just like almost moved in into one of the like, little spaces and hung out there for like almost three days straight. The thing about the library here is almost everything is available to you already. And if it isn't, someone will get it for you. <laughs> they were really helpful with my thesis uh, this year. So I needed to purchase a data set that costs a thousand dollars to um, examine some of my hypotheses and the library was able to purchase it relatively quickly. I was working on a project on the history of the steamboat. So I went to Rahner Library, the Special Collections Library, to get some information. I went to the librarian and I said, hey, I'm, I want to learn about the steamboat. And she went into the back and came back a few minutes later with a stack of original patents and letters signed by John Adams on the history of the steamboat. And she handed them over to me and said, here you go, see what, see what you can find here. And so that was a really exciting experience just because it was the first time that I had really been exposed to these incredibly valuable and, and fascinating historical documents. The best thing to do is just ask the librarians. They're there to help, they're really friendly. Um, they usually have a lot of experience with this type of projects. Even if you don't even have an idea of what you want to do for your research, they may be a great resource for you. And I think Baker is the most beautiful building in the world. I've been here four years and every time I walk past Baker, I'm just like, oh my God, how am I still in awe of how beautiful this building is? Next year I'll be working in DC at, uh, at the Carnegie Endowment, which is a think tank there. So I'll be doing research there. And then after that, I'm gonna go to Stanford for a PhD program. I'm actually returning to Dartmouth next year to complete a master's of science in um, computer science with a concentration in digital arts. I'm be doing a mathematics PhD program at University of Washington. This summer, I'll be going back to China, to Beijing, my hometown. And then after that, I'll be coming back to the US to work at IBM in New York City. So I will be moving to San Francisco, working for a healthcare information company. I'm working at this company called Wayfair. It's really cool. There's like a lot of Dartmouth alum there. Next year, I'm going to be working in Chile. I'll be going to medical school at Yale next year. I'm going to be working for an NGO there. Uh, I think I got the job thanks to all the experiences I, I got here at Dartmouth. What advice would you give to incoming freshmen? Make friends with upperclassmen. Learn from their mistakes, learn from their mountains and their valleys. Learn from all of them. Just be open to change. You might end up be doing something completely different and that's alright. People shouldn't be surprised if their interests change with time, especially here at Dartmouth. Just explore classes. Even if you don't think the topic is that interesting, if you hear great things about the prof, then take the class because it'll turn out to be something great and you may change your mind as a result. It's good to try things and then you can also give things up um, in favor of other things that you like better. Just keep, you know, being willing to meet new people um, because there's so many amazing people here and you only get to meet, you know, a fraction of them. And really explore every room in Dartmouth. That's something I wish I did more. Really explore all the rooms, Sanborn, um, the China Room. Explore all the rooms that we have here and study there at least once and just see what the library has to offer. Don't think that, don't think there's something that you can't have. These opportunities, uh, people shouldn't take them for granted. You know, like education in other countries is not the same as here. Like, you don't have these opportunities. People should appreciate what they have, what Dartmouth has to offer, and uh, do it now, you know, before it's too late. Oh, man. I feel like I've learned more in these four years than I had learned in probably the previous, previous 18. But 
I needed to do that learning for myself. <laughs> I always thought that college is the time for you to like just think about what you want to do in the future and, and start now and do it. Now I'm still confused. <laughs>